there are multiple processes by which these endocrine disruptors enter the aquatic environment. Probably the most commonly known are wastewater treatment plants. All of the waste we produce in cities and communities is funneled into wastewater treatment plants, which are very good in removing nutrients and other pollutants, but they're not designed to remove the compounds we usually refer to as endocrine disruptors. So we often measure those compounds downstream of wastewater treatment plant outfalls. Another source of many endocrine disrupting compounds in the aquatic environment are feedlots, sometimes landfills, or runoff from fields and agricultural areas. Those also contain many endocrine disruptors. A major proportion of what is still polluting our riverways is coming from non-point sources, runoff from agricultural fields all over the country, but particularly along the Mississippi River and what's draining into the Mississippi and what's draining into so the James River, I guess, in North Carolina, where the hog farms are just polluting all of the estuaries and everything else. So we still accept this. And we don't have the rules in place for non-point sources that we put in place through the Clean Water Act for somebody who had a pipe coming out of their factory, which we can't enforce. But runoff off of uh, waste lagoons from farms and just fertilizer runoff, dead zone at the end of the Mississippi as a result, we're still dealing with it. Uh, we have the most complicated chemical soup going in the river that's ever been invented. So everything that we do, everything that we have, everything that we put in our yards, everything that we flush in our toilets is headed for the river. Pretty much the world has been perturbed by human activity. We have a lot of pollution in a lot of areas at very low concentrations. We're just now starting to see it there. The question is, is it of any relevance? Adoption of birth control pills in the 60s um, has led to a large increase in the waterways because the body doesn't metabolize all of them, so they just come through. Virtually every pharmaceutical that we take into our body is going to be released in our urine. So that's why when people are administered drug tests, they collect urine samples. Um, usually somewhere between half and 75% of the drug goes out in our urine. So again, we have this nice centralized uh, collection system for sewage. Now our urine usually goes down the sewer, and so it's all concentrated at the wastewater treatment plant, and then it can go out into the world. Hormones are not necessarily pharmaceuticals. Those are often naturally produced from our body, so I'm going to release my set of hormones every day, and I'm not currently taking any pharmaceutical compounds at all. Um, a lot of women are taking uh, birth control, and so that introduces a set of either high-level natural hormones or even artificial hormones into their bodies that will again be excreted out in their urine and then go through the wastewater treatment process and potentially into the environment. And of course the important part is that downstream of water treatment plants is the next intake for the, the next town down the river's water, drinking water plant. Well, bacteria and viruses we get rid of by chlorinating them. So we don't filter them out, but we kill them. They may still come in in your water, but they're dead and they're harmless. We can't say the same about these chemicals and the, the chemical disruptors because they come through and we don't do anything about them. They're not live.